The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, I'm Basil Chapman, Type Technicians Hour. And let me tell my uh, subscribers, uh, the webinar is on the page. You can, you can check it out. Um, I'm very pleased. I've got everything I wanted uh, to cover right there, right to the minute, hour and a half. And for anyone who's interested uh, in subscribing, uh, we've had some really nice trades. Uh, hopefully, this could be a great help to you. And go to the front page of TFNN. There's still time. You can check it out because it was archived. So you'll be in the same position as those people that were unable to make the webinar uh, two days ago and were able, uh, are now going to be start looking at the uh, archive. And um, everything that was on it is pertinent to what I believe is coming up over the next couple of months. Very important. So I did this just to show the chop wave technique. We made that PD and I always look for the fourth highest peak in the two minute chart pull back from the 31 uh, 31 or 350 area pulls back down to the 3097 and what I had drawn in right here was a chop wave inside wedge. Remember I discussed that the other night inside wedge target resistance line dash green line and I did it to uh, what I chose to be a left side, right side price time match. And let's see where we are. Uh, you've got another another two minutes to go. These are two minute charts, so perhaps another bar or two. We've got right to that dashed line. That's the resistance line. We were, when I typed this in, we were right over there. Um, and I, I showed a peak A. I drew the, the cup formation. I don't know. Let's see if it goes to the 3102. Uh, 31 or 250 area. That's kind of a target over the next uh, three to four minutes. And here is a peak E in the Chapman wave in the 10 minute chart of the E mini, and it plopped all the way from the 314.50 high of the day down to the low of three, well, this particular low here of 3094, and it's trying to rally. Um, We'll see what happens. All right, let's get to our nitty gritties here. The Dow, uh, oh, I've got the dollar. Let me do the dollar. The dollar is holding well. It made it, remember, fourth highest peak, peak D on the 1st of October, pulls back from 99.67, comes all the way down to 97.11, rallies up to 98.45. Still got a long way to go. It hasn't made that PD yet. But if we can have like a restart here of another move to the upside, that's going to be positive. If it starts to drop under 97.40, it says this weekly PD uh, is going to make it probably the lowercase h pattern. That says be careful. We could retest uh, the lows of 97.14. Monthly chart is what a week and a little bit to go. Um, <laughs> looks like it's going to be a PD in the monthly chart. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties. Here we go. Uh, we've got, uh, what is today? Thursday. So Tuesday morning, right at the open, I want you to, I want you to short for my subscribers. But we had shorted uh, twice. Small, uh, one, one was an option. The other one was the, was the, uh, uh, the DOG one-to-one -one short the Dow. Um, it we took a loss there, so a fairly small loss in the, just uh, one something percent in the DOG, but it was a, about a 20 percent loss in the option. Options I always say, hey, if you're not prepared to see a 20 to 30 percent loss in your option, don't even think about trading options because in a second they can lose 50 percent. In a second, they can gain 50 percent. That's just the way options work. Now, what's really important is that the reason why I want you to is that I was getting a leg F, and the Chapman wave F with the technicals deteriorating is, is a sure sign you're getting a pretty steep sell-off. But I wasn't 100 percent sure that it would happen right then. Only the on-balance volume was giving me the clear and my notation, and it was saying that the strength. Let me just do this again. The strength of this combination of the green line going up and pink going down, going up over or below the black moving average, it says to actually, and I've been talking about this, for the Dow to actually plunge enough to get the green line under the black line to make a pink line, it's going to take 700 points 
And look what happened. Twice, yesterday and today, it went right to the 14-period moving average, and it's bouncing above. So it's going to be time. So I didn't want to fight it. I said, we're going to get short because I'm suspecting that we're in at least a sideways trading range, probably lower highs, lower highs and lower lows. I don't think we're in this formation just yet where it's a really sharp uh, sell-off. I don't, th I don't th see any reason why you can't expect a 4% to maybe an 8% uh, decline consolidation. Maybe December we start. Remember, my rule of thumb is that if, it, if the Dow, most of the indices, but I like to talk about the Dow, if the Dow can survive the, the August, September, October declines, if that's the case, we only had one little decline. If it can come back at the end of October, the first week of November, to almost close to the yearly high, there's a chance you're going to close almost at the yearly high. That's just my way of looking at the market. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't get terribly excited because this is such a rotational market. I'm looking at some of our stocks up. Uh, one is up over 1% today. The other one is down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's down a little bit. Uh, another one is up 0.60%. Uh, this is a mixed market. It isn't like 90% like in December when 93% of all stocks were going down. This is just this rotational correction. So let me show you what I'm looking at here. Let me just go back to this for a second. There's the email. Oh, there it is. So that's the technique. That's what I was talking about on my, on my show, uh, on my webinar. These are the techniques we use. I, I don't believe... I think we should actually close pretty reasonably today if there's no bad news, uh, further bad news. And even with bad news, look, we're down 40 points in the down, down five points. And this is not a real bad news sell-off where you're getting 15 points on the downside every day in the S&P, 130 to 170 in the Dow. There's residual strength here. So if you haven't done anything on the short side, I think you're going to get an opportunity. But I'm going to still say be very selective. I'm actually looking for more buys than sells at this particular point. That's just the way the market is. All right, so we did that exactly. That means the 10-minute chart hasn't made a leg B. It won't make a leg B until it goes um, above 3103.25. If it goes to uh, 0.75, if it goes to 3, I can't even read it. Let me just get it in a different place. 3103.75. If it goes to 3104.00, you've started your leg B. And that's going to be a good sign. Um, and every day, you know, in my, in my opening call newsletter, I, I discuss these things in great deal. Look, here's the chart. This is the 120 minute chart. Um, what it said is um, today, if the Dow, I got a whole bunch of stuff going on, but today, if the Dow is able to hold the plus 40s after 1.30 p.m., that will be good action, but a rally failure or failure to rally shows weakness. That's at that point, um, especially after so much selling has already taken place. So we'll see. And this is that I do this. And that's a 120 minute chart. I have the daily right here. Now you see the day yeah, up until this morning where we retested the 14 EMA, uh, the MACD hadn't crossed negative. And the stochastic was at 93%. That's very good. Look how much has dropped since then. So this is the start of some kind of a rollover. That's all I'm calling it right now. Could get worse, but I am calling it initially a rollover. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Admissions Hour. The Dow is down 46. S&P is down 5.8. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, folks, in the den, we just, someone, uh, um, Zia mentioned something about uh, Casey, which is, uh, uh, this is coffee. This is a continuous contract. Made a peak D. The MACD turned down, did cross negative, but very slightly, and then it started to show support yesterday. The stochastic did pull back all the way to 61. So this is this is this is a surge of buying, and it must be a story behind it because it should have popped maybe to the D level, which is at 114. Uh, or oh, this is the continuous contract, 113.30. So it should have popped maybe to one. 1381 and then kind of pulled back if it was just going to be a, a v-shaped formation something is going on yeah this is a stupendous move because it's really it's leg b now in the weekly chart and it's a leg a a brand new leg a in the monthly with the stochastic uh okay at 18 percent but the macd has actually started to turn up so this could say that the whole area of one to 95 um uh, in in the continuous contract of coffee, that could become a base here. This is very interesting because everything about you're always looking for those Ds. What was this? This is a D right here. Look, uh, the reason why the prices are moving around. I mean, the, the notation is this is a continuous contract. It gets smoothed out. So it went to a trough D right there on the uh, 11th of October at 95.60. This is a continuous contract, so your price might change, but the, the pattern and the um, time absolutely does not. Just the price gets smoothed out. So there it is. This is a very strong, is this a leg E or a brand new, is this an old leg E or a brand new A? For now, I'm just gonna have to say, I'm calling it E, but my eye suggests that from the monthly, from the weekly chart, there could be a pullback to where D was at the 113, high 113, low 114 level. And then another move up would confirm that this is actually a new a new move to the upside in coffee. Wow. Um, okay. So a couple of things going on here. Um, above in the dances, I think KC by far the most difficult commodity trade. And like Larry says, when you have the urge to trade KC, stop and consider a vacation until the urge goes away. Well, it just if you're looking at it purely as a technical analysis, look, it's the I couldn't complain. It's done everything that you asked for in the chat wave. I couldn't care if this was uh, um, uh, Z, 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 Z. 
if there ever was such a thing, or if it was um, a water ETF or um, coffee. I don't care what it is. It went to a peak. Dean the Chapman Wave did everything it should, had an arch failure. This is that. This is the dreaded H that we always talk about in the Chapman Wave methodology right here. And that right left, left side lowered right below the previous one and didn't come up for air at all. Only difference is that I should have put it, I haven't checked this for a while, should have put my down arrow there, and this should have been an up arrow, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak D is where you get a little cautious, you lift your foot off the accelerator just to see what's going to happen, I hover over the brake in case you need it, yellow light goes on, and if everything's safe, there's no through traffic, you can just keep going. And there it is, goes to D. I would have put a down arrow in if I'd seen it, but I also hold off sometimes and I keep the plus sign because if this is an M-shaped formation like it was there, you can only go, you might see the price go below the 14 period moving average, in this case, the 200 period moving average, um, and the MACD and the stochastic goes under 80%, but it could be brief as there's another attempt to try to heal a dreaded H pattern right here that went under and within two bars, kaboom, it goes back again. Hey, I, you know, I always say this. I remember uh, uh, um, my father-in-law once said to me, uh, I can't play, uh, trade, um, uh, I don't remember which country, this country's stocks. He says, they're all, they're all, those bankers are crooks. I would never tell. So then I got a chart and I said to him, okay, he has some stocks from that country. Um, and yes, some stocks from the United States. You tell me which ones are from the foreign country. You tell me which ones are the crooked ones um, from America or the good ones from America or the crooked ones. No way you could tell. Could you tell from here that this is uh, not uh, um, a high tech or this could have been um, target. This could have been target. Look at the chart. Target. Okay. Another peak D pulls back. Yeah, the MACD was very poor. See, I would never have said from the chart formation other than with earnings that there could be a spiral from the 114s in target all the way to uh, today's high of 127.96 in, in just two days. So, yeah, so I'm just going to say to you, trade what you see. Larry's the guy that teaches trade what you see, and this is what you, you're looking at. Let me just go back to the fuses. I'm kind of intrigued. Um, yeah, so we went in the futures, we went right to above that, we got stalled at the 200 period moving average in the two minute chart, we're at peak B, and the technicals all holding well. Let's see if we can start a leg C above 3103.00, all right? And I love my 1-3 rule, so this is already 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the fifth bar from that peak. You got maybe one bar to get close to it. Uh, one, three, six rule. We'll see what happens. All right, there we go. So now I did the Dow. Let's just go S and P. S and P. Um, it's kind of holding okay up here. This is just a high level consolidation. So we'll see what happens. I can just tell you that if the S and P starts to trade at three eight two, three thousand and eighty two, that's going to go from a sell signal to a sell mode very quickly. But so far, it hasn't even gone to a sell signal. Not yet. If it close, it might. It's a daily chart. Uh, the IWM, I never did in the update. The IWM allows you to see, this is what I said about the IWM. Don't be fooled just because when the down the S&P a week and, and, the, and the QQQ is weak, the index 100, and IWM, the Russell 2000, is holding well, that it's great. No. It's a very lagging indicator, uh, index. So you just got to be very careful, and we, I think you're going to get a wonderful buy on the IWM at some point, um, but not just yet. Okay, um, QQQ, one, two, three, there it is, just digesting the gains. Let's look at the XLK, I don't know if I've even updated the chart. Yes, so there was a, let me just, is that a, is that a peak over there? 12, 12, 12, two 12s, okay. So you had a big D, then it goes to, E slash A, F slash G, F, sorry, F slash B, and a G slash C. 
So the XLK is a little different to the others in that it just didn't make a peak right there. It was a double top, and, and the next was bar was a higher high. So I'm calling this a G slash C. You, you might even have to see a, a D in this one before it's all over, and then it pulls back. But everything about it says we're in a digestive phase, and the S&P Select Spider Fund, Tech Spider Fund, had a question about shorting the SMHs the other day. You know, we were short the SMHs. If I had still held that short, it really just it barely got stopped out it did get stopped out but barely by a, by a fraction um if i just held it that would have been very good um i think this is going to be a little more complex than just a very simple smash to the downside oh sme smh is the semis are down dollar 91 uh, at 130.67 135.26 just stopped us out the other day Otherwise, we would have been short the, the semis. And I still think short is probably the way to go because it has a chapter where you store leg formation. He has the leg, he has the body, there's the neck. Now we're into the beak, and the beak has now gone below the body, and that's usually very negative. So the next bounce is where you're going to maybe see an H pattern in the semis. And then if we start a deeper correction for the next week or two, um, we'll watch it very closely. A new high, 135.27 would be. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. And yes, we made that leg C in the, in the two-minute chart. That's what we're looking for. Why are we looking for leg C? Because you want to go all the way to a leg D and then a peak D. Remember, Chapman, we look for the lowest low bar, most obvious low bar. We count. Uh, each higher peak alphabetized, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. 
You can go to E, F, and G, but you really, D is where you're expecting that something can happen. It doesn't have to. It can recycle to the upside and start a whole brand new buy mode to another four peaks. It's an incredible indicator. Or you can say, just be a little careful here. And then you've got the patterns, the arch and the cup. You can mix them up, straight line down, and then you try to rally and you fail. We just saw that. A red because if you, if you have te bad technicals, it can go much deeper. And green because the Y, the, inver the reverse Y, if you take out the left side high, you can go much higher. In fact, look, all of these are the Y pattern. Look, there's the leg up, there's the Y, and it broke to the upside. There's the leg down, broke in the Y, it breaks. So just, you know, these are fractals. The fractal is really a small, it doesn't have to be small, but it is, it is a, a it is a pattern that repeats identically in all time frames. Uh, so that's what we're looking at. All right, so now let's, let's do a couple of things here. Uh, crude oil, crude oil. Um, I, I, this is the V-shaped pattern, went to a D and pulls back, holds the, look how beautiful that 14 period moving average is, the black line, and then it pops up, it walks the 9 and the 14, and then pops to an E, plunges below, and then goes right back up again to a new high today, a new recovery high today, 58.28 of the continuous contract. There's a peak D, remember what I say about Ds, be careful, 60, 14, 16th of September, plunges down to 50.99. Oh, let me check the price, because this is a continuous contract. Everything's correct except the price might might be smoothed out. So the low was 51.20. I've got 15.99, 51.20, And here it is at 58.08. I said that I think it's stuck in a rectangle formation. Maybe the high 58, 59.25. If it goes above that, that's something else. We'll see what happens here. It's been stuck. And in the weekly chart, you've got 60, about 61 as the rectangle resistance, and you've got really important support is in the 53 area, but it does go all the way to 50. TLT, Lehman 20 year treasury bond fund at 139.42. Oh, this is going to be so interesting because look, if you look at this as the price, it's been stuck in a range with lower lows and lower highs. And I'd say to go into the 141s, oh, you've got to be careful because that would mean that money might come out of stocks into uh, the volatility of stocks if they go down into the so-called safety of bonds. Here we are in the, right in this lower register. We did the dreaded H. It's still acting poorly after the H pattern, but the weekly chart, the monthly chart is still good. That was the weekly. There's the H pattern I drew in right there. And the monthly is still holding very well in the upper range of this month's candle. And that's good. All right. Uh, just a review. I had a couple of quick questions come on if they're quick, but there were questions that came in. So let me just answer them one at a time. Yes, this morning, I, I apologize. I just, between last night, uh, um, board meeting and stuff, and, and um, this morning, I had to go back into town and back here again. I just, I ran out of time to do all the work I used to do for my subscribers to my opening call. So let me just do a couple of things I said to them. I'll do it on the show today. Our stock, that we, one of the stocks we've got, BDSI, the buy delivery, holding really well. It's down 0.07 at 624. We're in at 517. We've taken uh, two, little, two little, little bits off. Um, as part of money management, it had got to peak yet 645. That's a big move, 517 to 645. It's one of the reasons why I said we're not going to buy a, a $238 stock like now. Um, this is service now because we could do the same percentages without putting that much money to work because I was suspecting that we were coming into a period of some volatility and I want to be, have some cash ready for when the really good buys come in. But look what happened to service now. I, I said, I, I don't want to go through it again. I went through a whole thing in my webinar. Please, if you're interested in really learning a whole bunch of techniques that I'm sure you don't hear about almost anywhere else because these are techniques that I've worked on myself. Most of them are proprietary to the extent I haven't really searched if every, every, you know, everyone's work, but I know that I don't hear about it discussed. So it's my um, volume climax uh, reversal 
a whole bunch of things. And I'd say that now should not, after the smash of the downside of 230.99 on the 23rd of October, it was around about here, 238, 242. I said, we're not going to buy it, but follow it, because I think it's going to go rally for about 28 bars. And if it holds 28 bars without even coming close to the low, it can even go for 56 bars. It was doing fantastically. It went all the way to 267. 30 points high. And then S&P said it's going to be included. I think S&P 500 maybe. It was going to be included. And it spiked up huge. It hit 284 yesterday. But on a percentage basis, look, going from the 224 level to 28, uh, we've got something very uh, even better with the, with, the, with the BDSI. And we've got something even better with the other one. So I said I, I talk about it. Um, there's the rectangle formation. I discussed this the other day. I said that you could get an inside buy mode that can go to a peak D in the a smaller time frame, in this case, 120 minute chart, going towards right on or just above the previous side, and then it comes back into the rectangle. And look what happened. It went to peak A, B, C. Today's a leg D, and it's not yet close to the uh, 645 level. It hit a height, you know, 636. So we watch this because you don't want to turn around and make an arch formation. An arch formation says, oops, it can go and retest the 6 area, and it's at 625 right now. So that's one of the techniques. Um, uh, CYBR is another one I didn't have time today to show. But what I discussed on, on my, in my webinar was I love the stock. We, we had it at 104. Earnings came out. It popped to 119.99. Um, it did pull back way sharper than I anticipated, which is the only reason why I said we had taken two small bits off, one at 100 and uh, in the 116s and one in the 109 area. And then I said, you know, I, I, I didn't get us back in. I said, we've, we've got a core position. I'd like to add back the little bit that we took off, the two little small chunks we took off. I haven't done that. And here it is today. It went to 120.61 to a new high. And what did I say? The, this rectangle formation had a whole part of my show on, on my webinar, had a whole part of it talking about this pattern called the inside buy mode, that you should have a, a smaller time frame taking it to a leg D if certain conditions were met. Bam, look at this. We went to right just above. Now, I have to call this not a B. Now, it does something else. Now, I call it an E slash B, saying, hey, we've reached our E. That's the old. Um, notation, are the technicals strong enough to say, you know what, I think it's going higher so that we can go to a new C and a D. And here it is, leg B. And the reason why Cyber Arc software, I love the stock, it's in, the, it's, it's in, the, it's in hack. It's, it's one of the leaders in the um, internet security. And at a whopper of a fall, it, it, it plunged from um, 148 down to 96, 94. Uh, I mean, that's a huge move down. So I, I, I'm hoping this is one of our intermediate term buys, like we've had the dollar, like we've got Bank of America. We'll see. I mean, the day's young, we'll see. Oh, no, day's young, let's see what's happening to our little short term. Here we are, leg D, leg E. We're in leg E in the two minute chart, and now new leg B in the 10 minute chart. I think that's why it turned into quite a nice day the market in the end. You never know. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let's just get to a couple of questions that came in. I love these technical questions because this, you know, this is what we're all about here. So um, Greg wants to know, morning, Basil. Does Truff D have the same importance going down as a peak D does on the way up? Thanks, Greg. So, you know, I've spent a lot of time over the years. Look at the cyber. It went to a Truff D in the uh, weekly chart. But I have a rule of thumb that suggests a massive move down like oh, let me just show you something here mm, there it is a massive move down and uh, this is the daily of the Dow from 27,306 on the 12th of September in trough A trough B and then a huge trough C and that was a chapter wave five we won't talk about that but it was a nice reversal candle on the way up you see that green uh, long-legged uh, long-legged Roman candle um, that's a good that's a good candle now my over the years what I've noticed and I've even noticed it in the very short-term time frames on on the way up the way the notation works it just seems to give you identification markers that historically have worked way better than on the way down. So on the way up, I use the letters plus the technicals. On the way down, I use the technicals. The letters are just a guide. I don't say, oh, we're, we're at a C, we have to go to a D on the way down. Trough C, we have to go to a leg D, to a trough D, a low, a low, a low. I found too many times you can abort a, a down move very quickly at A, B, C, D, E, F. It, it, the letters are not as important. They're only important in the sense that there are times when I get trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D, trough E, and it just keeps going down. And that says, be careful, you're in a continuation pattern. But when I get it uh, with a very long leg, A to the downside, and a short B, and then there's a sharp rally to the upside. That rally sometimes, like here, like this is the reason why I, I use this, this flagpole pattern for cyber, CYBR trading 119.17, up a dollar 25, because um, the speed to trough A was such that once you, especially after a gap, 
Once you do anything filling the gap or not completely filling the gap, you reverse to the upside. If the technicals are still strong, I'm done. I'm only looking at the upside or I'm out of whatever position is. So that's that. So the answer is no. It doesn't have the same importance. It is important only as a measure and a gauge of time that's used or um, the speed of the down move. But on the way up, I absolutely use letters all the time. And I mean, that's the reason how I got that sell signal, the, uh, the reason why I wanted a short Tuesday morning, because everything was telling me that there was some kind of a, a pullback coming of importance. At that point, it was, yes, the letter F. Well, no, let me do this one at a time. Let me just show you. In the Dow, it was an F. In the S&P, an F is where some of the deepest declines occur. In the, in the um, S&P, it was F. In the QQQ, that was a leg F, perhaps going to a peak F. There it is. In the IWM, we had already made the sixth highest peak F at 160.46 way back at the beginning of November. Here we are in a trading range to the downside, holding quite nicely, but in a trading band. So, yes, that's the way I look at it. But look at the troughs on the way down. Trough E, um, the, I, I look for the technicals more than anything else. So the answer is no. What do I look for? I look for the technicals on the way down. I look for notation on the way up and then put the technicals together. Um, the other question I had, so I hope that answers the question. Uh, the question I had was, I think, uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting it right here. Let me just see. Um, I think it's from L. Uh, here we go. Mm, what is the question? Oh, 25.40. Can I buy TBT here? Let's go to TBT. Of course, I want to look at TLT. But let's see TBT. Can I buy here? Well, that made a peak E, uh, and then it pulled back sharply, and then made. This is exactly what I call a rogue wave. Everything about the technicals were coming down, but out of the blue, it spirals up to that peak right there, and that's a peak F. And I can't put a down arrow because I've already used it up on the E. So it's an accidental new high, and I have to use the inverted V, and I always color that red. So yes, that's a, that's a reversal. Now, the question is, is the TBT about to rally? And my answer is, based on what I'm looking at, L, I would say no, it could bounce a little bit, but I'm suspecting that there's a little more weakness to come in, um, in the TLT. TLT is at 131 down uh, uh, from the 130 uh, at 139.29, and that should probably try for a leg C. I don't know if it's even go to a D, but I think it should try a little higher. So, in a timing model, I would say to you probably not yet in the TBT, which is the inverse of the TLT. I think the TLT has a little way to go to the upside just right now. Then I think it consolidates, and only later. Does it start to see maybe in January? I don't know. A really strong move to 149, uh, which would be um, above the peak C of August, and that'll start leg D at 148.91. So, just if uh, talking about a timing model, I just don't think it's ready right now. I do think you're going to have a chance to do that, but at 25.40, now it's 25.40, uh, 25, let me just get the exact price TBT. 25.48 right now. Um, I, 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 I don't think you're talking, Alan, I don't think you're talking about a bounce. I think you're talking about a real position that's going to just knock the data heights off the wall. No, I, I don't think so. Maybe even on a short term basis, there could be a bit of a bounce in the TB as the TLT pulls back, because I do think there's going to be an attempt to get close to the recent highs and then fail in the market and then come down to lower lows. And, and that would say to me, money will go from stocks into bonds again. Hey, I could be wrong, Al. I'm sorry. I know you're very good at timing, but I just I don't want to I don't want to change from day to day. I'm just saying I don't think right now the TBT is the way to go. Mike in Ormond Beach, how are you? Hey, Basil. Um, Basil, I sold my CGC trade uh, today. 
um, and uh, my MJ. And I was wondering if you think uh, where, if, first of all, if we could get a some kind of a pullback and where you think uh, it may get down to so I can reload again. So, uh, first of all, congratulations. You're really, that was, that was well, very well planned. Uh, secondly, I'm looking at some of the others, like a GWPH, which is uh, GW Pharmaceuticals, medical marijuana, a whole cannabis section, uh, but on medical terms. And it's just been pummeled from 196 down to uh, today's low. I mean, 196 to 96. 196 to 96. If you take away 100, that's the 100 points that have dropped. And that's one of the, the so-called better. I, I think you did the right thing, but I'd like to look at it. So, can you hold on? We'll be right back. Yeah. yeah I okay, folks, we're going to look at CGC. Uh, that is Canopy, I believe, Canopy Growth. Dow's down 24. So, we'll be down right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And uh, just that two-minute chart made a peak uh, E with two little doji candles and now it's pulled back. So now we'll see how the next uh, thing phase goes. We're looking at CGC, which is canopy growth. Can it be growth in the um, medical marijuana se sec segment? And as I say, GWPH, uh, one, one of the real big winners, dropped 100 points. So there's a big problem in that area. So I suspect, so you kept nothing. You just got in and you got out. You took your money and you ran. Is that correct? Yeah, Basil, I, um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Tom O'Brien, you, Steve Rhodes, and there's two other technicians that I learned from 
And for all of the great education, I was able to pull off this trade from from what you and everybody else taught me. So I want to thank you guys first for educating me. And what I did was I had – see, I work full-time, and it's so hard to trade the way I really want to trade. And what I did was I had – I looked at the chart, and I saw we were getting kind of close to the 50 EMA, and I saw where – that and the 34 EMA has acted as resistance in the past. So I put my uh, sell order uh, in that area, and it went off. Wow, and, you know, very it went a good. Bit higher, but, you know. I'd... It hit the 50 moving average. But you know what? I think you did a wonderful trade. You did it. That was perfect. Now, the big thing is this. How would you get re, re uh, kind of re-enter? And I'm just going to say to you, the profits that you've made, and you know, I, I'm just going to tell you from my own experience of what I, over the thousands of people I've been involved with over the years that I've done this, um, you've told me how they've done and, and where they've gone wrong, etc. You cannot, making a real nice chunk of money puts two responsibilities on you. One is you kind of pat yourself on the back, you've lifted your hands off the, off the wheel, and that's when you hit the, hit the pole. You've got to be careful not to do that. Number two is, where do you get back in and what amount of money? And I'm just going to say to you, in the CG, you've got, you you, you waited, you're a patient, keep your job, do what you're doing, that, be happy that you're able to do this. It's like a game, it's like a pleasure, it's like a, it's like a sport. Try, see your next entry, and I would just say your next entry should be a little less. And take your time, Let, if it pulls back to the 20.20 .20 or 19.70 area, let's talk again. Maybe that's where you want to add a little bit more again. Have a great okay. day. Congrats.